Okay, it's Daniel. I uh, just wanted to give a couple updates on the charger. Okay. Um, I'm going to answer a few questions and then uh, that got that were posted in the comments and just uh, show some updates. So, the biggest update is that I added a second charge controller. Uh, same unit as the first one. Um, it's the 250 100, so it's a 100 amp charger. Um, Again, this is a 24 volt system, so uh, this allows me to basically run one of my arrays that gets shaded a lot uh, in uh, lower voltage configuration so that I can get more power out of each uh, panel. So uh, this controller is, is used for all the arrays that are on the roof, and this one is for array that's ground mounted in the back. Um, so one of the questions was, what does the AC wiring look like for split phase uh, 240? So again, there's two um, multi-plus 3,000 amp hour uh, inverters here, uh, roughly capable of around four and a half kilowatts of charging. Um, the the two are linked together via this ethernet cable. So it comes down here and goes over here. And you do some settings inside um, the device with, uh, again, with uh, an ethernet dongle over here, or excuse me, an ethernet cable um, and your computer. And essentially you can take the positive wave of, uh, or if we look at one of the half sine waves of, of one inverter, um, you can sync them so that they're 180 degrees out of phase with this inverter and then the delta between the two is going to be your 240 volt RMS. Um, <clears throat> so how's it hooked up? So the first thing you can see, these are off, that's critical, um, is that there's a line, a neutral, and a ground coming out of each inverter. Okay, so the line is black, the neutral is white, and then ground. Okay? And then this is really thick uh, six gauge cable uh, because you can pull a lot of current on this on each device. Um, and then the same for here. So you've got your line, your neutral, and your ground. Okay. So at this point we'll switch over to the back and then look at what's going on there. Okay, so here we are at the back circuit breaker box. Um, this circuit breaker box has a um, 120 volt, 20 amp breaker here, and then this is a 20 amp breaker for the 240. Okay, so how is this all wired up? We have two inputs from the inverters coming in on the side, and then outputs um, uh, for the 120 and the 240 coming out of the top. All right, so if we first look at what's going on, we have on the right side the hot and the neutral and a ground coming in. Okay, the hot is going into this uh, lead back here, which is attached to a bus. Okay, and then this bus, every other one is connected. So this is inverter number one right here, and then this is inverter number two, or excuse me, number one over here. All right, so it's every other one, every other pin here is connected to this 120 leg. Okay, and then on the top, uh, the left side inverter comes in, goes around, okay, and its hot leg is connected to this terminal, and this terminal connects to the pin over here, and then the pin over here. Okay, so again, it's every other one. All right, so all the neutrals are end up tied together up here, okay, 
and all the grounds are tied together up here. And the ground is not connected to the neutral until uh, the inverter relay kicks on. So when you turn on the inverters, you hear a click, and that makes the ground tie to neutral, and that allows the Tesla charger to be happy. Okay, so on the output side, again, we've got a 120 leg here, another 120 leg here. Okay, this 120 is connected to this pin, okay, which goes through the circuit breaker to the red output wire for the actual charger. Excuse me, the black output wire for the charger. Okay, and then this 120 leg goes to this pin and goes through the circuit breaker to the other hot leg. So you've got two hot legs now that have a potential difference of 240 volts between these two terminals. And then that out goes, that goes out to the, uh, uh, to the uh, receptacle. Okay, and then again, neutral is part of that bundle and it's just tied to the neutral block. And a small ground up there. Okay, so if, if you were to take a voltmeter, which I'm not gonna do, but between that terminal and neutral is 120 volts. Between that terminal and neutral is 120 volts. And between the two terminals, it's 240 volts. And again, you get this the same thing out here at this output terminal, out, out of the circuit breaker. And then for the 120, I've got it tied Let's make sure I get this right. Okay. I have it tied to this left side inverter. Okay, so the positive leg, or the not the positive, but the hot terminal is coming in here. Okay, and it attaches to the pin that's on top of that circuit breaker. And then this is the uh, hot lead for the 120. And then you can't really see it this smaller neutral line okay is the 120 neutral and then there's an additional ground okay so all this cabling is extra thick six gauge uh, just to um, minimize any voltage drop the 120 is a simple 20 amp circuit um, it's only running a fan and the wiring is you know similar to what you have in your house but a little bit beefed up um, there is no actual need to have this thick a gauge wire, but it definitely uh, can help add a few volts between uh, when you're when you're charging at high current. Okay. So overall, this system can't draw more than 20 amps okay, um, at 240 volts, which is you know 400 or 4,800 watts and you know, I will basically never run the inverters that high. Even though they can do it, um, I'm not going to run them that high. So, All right, I hope that answers some questions um, on how this is all hooked up. And go ahead and tell me uh, what's uh, wrong, if anything. And thank you.